this project initiated uh, this invitation from Centro Pecci, uh, main uh, curator Stefano. Uh, I can't remember. The, anyway, the, the, so I was invited to come to to come to uh, Prato uh, next to Florence, which you all know is the center of Italian made in Italy fashion production. And uh, I was told uh, that this is like uh, paid by the by the town, and it was basically. Uh, uh, had to do with security issues. And I had no idea about Prato, I had no idea. I knew there were a lot of Chinese, but I didn't know much. And, um, but that was like what I heard in the first meeting with the CD uh, person, uh, uh, Toko, Rosanna Toko. Art can be as effective as surveillance cameras. And, um, uh, when I went to, so I tried to show you a little bit what I proposed. They knew that I have been learning languages uh, basically through all my uh, life. And, uh, and they knew that I have been working on a project called I Want to Be Chinese. And uh, I knew, and they knew that, uh, that they wanted to keep working with me on, on this kind of Chinese, uh, you know, uh, aspects of my work. And they discussed even uh, one person show there because they have a, a big Chinese presence. But I didn't know exactly about the conflict there was, etc. So when I started to work, my first thing was, uh, my first project, I, uh, I'm, I am a big communicator was to explain them uh, my project, my, my concept. And, uh, uh, and I had no clue what I was actually really doing and, it, and one thing led, led to that. So the first thing I made is like I want to work on, on, on uh, learning and I made this logo, they asked me for a logo. Very early on they asked me for a logo. But what I understood was I want to work with textile. And I want to work with what, what's called Chakart, which is like the most advanced technology in, in textile uh, making. And they introduced me to, to um, a factory called Marini Industries, which was fantastic to work with, that let me produce those fabrics on that, on that logo. And as you can see, I just put in British Italian in the machine and had it translated. Chinese and had it translated to different languages, crossed it and made basically this kind of logo, which I call logo, which gives me from Google search, Google Translate, gives me all these little features, a speaker, a microphone, and I found this kind of interesting. So, so first I made the fabrics, and then I made these fabrics. I was able to produce eight different types of fabrics, and. Um, different colors, etc. So that consumed already a couple of months and it was not easy. But I still, not didn't, I still didn't know what exactly to do with it. And I went a couple of times back and forth and eventually uh, they told me Gucci producers in the same factory. The Pope got his stuff made there, um, uh, Prada and also Hermes and everybody, like all the people really fine fabric makers, textile makers, or fashion houses producing. And, uh, and then I was thinking, yeah, well, let's do some presentation that has to do with the, uh, with, uh, uh, I, I made, immediately had in mind, I wanted to not only represent the managerial part, the rich part, I wanted to also have the workers. And um, you might maybe know that I have, uh, uh, I have been like obsessed with Karl Marx for quite some time, and I was doing Comte de Marxists since 2011, and this is actually that became the part of Comte de Marxists. And uh, just to kind of show you uh, where we are here, but why can't I get my my uh, Comte de Marx? 
Marxist, they, they Marxists don't know this issue come up as a site, not as a chapka. The word of chapka, I don't wanna why does he just go in there without uh, in the address? Anyway, so um, okay. Not secure, oh you have the secure the secure business here. Nothing can do. Oh, in any case, so so I made a lot of work, you know, called the Marxist. I had a sh uh, and, and so so this fitting, and so finally I got to produce with this really professional people uh, to make one sample, a lot of sampling one of these textiles is two thousand eight hundred euros or something like that. And then you don't have yet the, the, the things, and then you still need to produce something. And uh, so. I came then relatively quickly to understand wow, Gucci originates there in Florence. And so let me look at Gucci, and most people talk about Gucci. It's the most orientalist producing, the most crazy, the most just image producing uh, company there is. Everybody talked about Gucci. I just uh, love it and I don't love it. It appalls me and I'm fascinated, both on both sides. I myself. Don't have a Gucci, but because I worked so long with Gucci, I bought fakes. Uh, Gucci fake, and I love the fake industry, which I think is in itself very interesting. You know? So, what I did, I, I started to look at their uh, fashion shows, which you are, which are made easily available. And in this case, I, I found things like that. So, with my fabrics, I was making that, okay, my fabric, this fabric goes for this, please copy me. And, and then here we also have uh, New York Yankee logo. And that was just at the time which I also realized Gucci was making a, a, a headquarter. And the headquarter station is in Trump Town, which I thought is so interesting. You know, and so these, these are actually how the fabrics they look. Uh, then here's Italian. Italian uh, and then thing. And so finally they made me the stuff. Finally they made me the clothes. Okay? So this becomes this and everything was made. But I, I we, we, we look at it, you will see the, you will more of it. It is incredibly beautiful. The results are stunningly beautiful. So that's the Gucci coat from a fashion show. Then this is the fashion. Those are basically the, the, the way I communicated with the tailors. They found me these tailors. This is this, you see, this is this, this goes here. And then, uh, you know, the actual fabric. And then, and then I got to the side. By the way, Gucci, the snake dress, I found the snake dress. Not 4,900, just go right away to 5,001. Normally, I think they're 4,990, but here it's 5,100 snake dress. So, obviously, you cannot sell much with a snake in Europe, but you can sell a lot in China with the word snake. And so you can see what I started to realize that China is not only work in the industry, but they also are the, basically the main, you know, they are the, the buyer of Gucci. And so here's how it looks, the result. And so it went on. Uh, you will see more of this, so I teach up, what do I do with the workers? And my idea was when I go right away to the workers, and the workers are here, okay, instead of copying, and I don't like that, the clothes of workers, I wanted to buy, go into a Chinese sweatshop and purchase the outfits from workers against the money they ask. They say, you know, they have something from the model, uh, ready to wear, uh, how much would you sell it, you know? And then they say, I bought this for 30, give me 30. And we say, okay, here 30, next day we go and we pick it up, you know? So that was the idea. And then how do I work with these fabrics when I have them? The idea was to make these labels. And I wanted to have three types of labels. One is a local label, please teach me. This is a photo montage. One is, uh, and that's the point, one is a Google search, and that's most of the thing is based on a Google search, Prato, 
and textile workers. And then I got the results and I made screenshots. And I will show you the screenshots. That's the second logo. And the third logo, which I want to have, is a biographical notice. Let's say face or not, name or not, first name or not, like as anonymized as they like. It obviously always consensual. And then came to came to Italy then and then works this and this. So that was my idea. Now, what we see here around the time of working are simply the results at the time by putting in Italy's work, also you know, Prato and and uh, textile worker. And I get all these interesting things. And that kind of opened my eyes. I didn't know it. So, but then I use these for my logos. This become then my logos. Now, the point is this, <clears throat> and that's the difference between, let's say, uh, working the way I would have known it and working in Italy, and I was inexperienced. When people don't like what you do, they will tell you. Because that stage, that website, the way it is, the way I showed it to you, exists since about February. Then I knew what I was doing. You know, we started to work in September of 15, uh, of 16. So by 17, everything was described and so on and so on. And it was also Barbania, fantastical, fantastical, no problem. And I came. And then the closer we got to the presentation and the emails with like, yeah, the Chinese, always speaking for the Chinese. We, we don't meet anybody, they don't want to do it, they're too scared, they don't want to do it. So eventually I arrived and nothing was done on the work training. Nothing was done. And then I insisted, look, we are not going to have a fashion show if we don't have the workers. So eventually, suddenly they found somebody. We go over, he was skeptical, and I can speak a little bit of, of Chinese. And when I spoke like two seconds Chinese, he said, okay, come in. Uh, Curry come in and they cleared, and I will show you, they cleared the, uh, I'm trying to see now where we have, where they let us actually, I think I have it here, Mark Saprato, it's here, and then uh, worker, Chinese worker, or Chinese factory, that's it. So they let me film in there. So not only did he send the people home who worked there, he let us walk with high heels, with high heels on, on his machine table. Can you see the machine table here? On the machine table. And so basically always in the, the we, we took no, they don't want to do it, and suddenly it was possible. But not even that, I said we don't even know anybody. I said, I asked them, do you only communicate with your taxes and the police, with your child, don't you have any kind of interaction? And they said, no, 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 no. And I worked here with somebody who worked with employed by the museum and by the city, the commune. So, anyway, uh, I was able to do it. Uh, and I was able to do it. But then, when it came to the workers' clothes, they refused. The, the guy really said, Commander Style, uh, the owner of the factory, I can show you to him. Uh, see, they let us do this, and, and everybody enjoys itself. He's the owner <laughs> of the factory. He has like three or four <laughs> spare jobs. He was he wearing my outfits, he was wearing my Yankee, yeah, New York Yankee hair, and he let us do it. And then you have, I was able to put in the back, like protest things, Mark Saprato, turn it around, Gucci Aprato. You know? And so we were, we were able to film this. And we were able to do this. But when I asked my now, I would like to buy from your workers. And they said, okay, 20, 20 euro uno. Need that immediately, for 20, you would come on. I was afraid, wow, I don't want to do this. You kind of just like, a team top down. And then the Prato, the Prato person who was with us, Sergio, was saying, no, we don't have money. And then he was immediately changing, and then he was upset. But he had, at the time, a t-shirt, 
and he told me, Yo, regalo, regalo, you can, you can have it. And I understood that it's an exchange code. And he said, for 400 uh, by some fancy Italian designer wanted me to give it to you. That's why he is in a blue one. He changed, he had it ready, but then when he, the museum guy, refused to take for 28 each item, we didn't need so many items, he went, he went uh, upset. But that was already for me, I understand, they know why. But nonetheless, because I insisted, so suddenly they came up with a bunch and said, we have it already. So they gave me a really just from the supermarket, uh, brought the water clothes, with the labels on it and said, these are for workers. They didn't want to be named. I mean, so, so, so you see, for example, how on, on, on an on a already operational level, they blocked it. And then when this came out, when this came out, the uh, Stefano um, from the, the main creator yelled at me as if I wrote this article and said, <laughs> Questo. Like these articles let the racial tension mount. So, so as if you know, as if sexism create, uh, as if feminism creates sexism. It's exactly the same logic. And okay, so now uh, we go. Uh, we had a lot of discussions uh, whether I can show the work that I wanted to do it and, and uh, eventually my way of presenting the actual show, we go back now to the show itself, is uh, because this is actually kind of uh, here in China. Yes, what they did was to create in, a, in Chinatown uh, Prato, which is called Macrolotto Zero, mm -hmm. uh, a, a kind of a, a festival, a, day, a, a summer festival. And I did not know, I found on Instagram that the same people who worked with me uh, being like, oh, finally, finally we get gentrification <laughs> in Chinatown. So I saw Instagram, I, I can't find them, but if a Macrolotto Zero, you will find my own actors uh, who helped me being really happy because they work there, they have their studio. Finally, we get gentrification. So, so, so they were really very happy about gentrification of Chinatown, where this thing was presented. And then the idea of the presentation was each, uh, and I go to the presentation, each, uh, for each uh, section, I have a little video. And I show you first, the first video, the snake head. But, and uh, uh, those videos are manipulated material that I use to introduce things. And let's say uh, we filmed it, all the material was obviously then taken away because the brand show was interrupted and it turned into a scandal, uh, which then led to all the consequences I, I suffered. But I wanted to show you in, in Vienna how this thing looked and then you get an idea. I think this is number one. Let me see as the first one. It starts here. So in Vienna, by the way, I used their contract, which I had a translation of the contract, which I had to sign to get my stuff released. And, and I had to uh, neglect, I had to give up on my uh, on my honorary, on all the money, on all my rights, I had to write up, so I only get myself. Uh, and obviously, I'm non disclosure to me, but I projected right away <laughs> in the introduction. <laughs> so, what I'm doing here is actually a complete violation of what I'm saying. But, you know, <laughs> the. Okay, so I'm going to write the starts. So, you see the beginning. Okay, what it, it goes, you know, that, that's the game. What is a snake head? So here we see the form from one camera on the side.
So I made the snakes in porcelain, and I was interested in the snakes on the floor of the runway show. And so here you see the daily field, because I'm, I'm not really very organized yet. So basically, in English, in America, they were what we call coyotes or pushers, you know, and basically people traffickers. And so that's why the snake hand, you know. So that was the introduction. Now, I show you as a second organizing video, uh, without performance, let's start that one. That's the work part. The second, uh, I think it's 12, would be here. Uh, okay, so it's, I have to go back because you see, I wanted to make a video, but I couldn't yet make this video. Here comes now the second part. Okay, yeah, actually, here you see the people walking a little bit with the outfits. <laughs> Thank 
actually, here's a real model. He does like, he's going to be next week in Milan. And uh, he's a real model, and the other one is also a professional. We are friends, and they help me out. There is actually a cool style, because in Prato they took uh, all my material away, all video material was taken away, because um, they wanted to, the show completely disappear. And on top of it, they insulted me and the board member, uh, a board member from the Pecci Museum, uh, assaulted me even physically. <laughs> and not only verbally, but physically. Okay, so here comes the second part. The second part uh, is the main part, uh, and it is organized uh, around two shows. One about the clinic, uh, like filmed at an operational uh, uh, space and the second one and the second one is an arm uh, with fires at the cemetery where it's about memento mori and I just want to do again show you a little bit how the idea functions maybe I show directly I want to show you actually the original one and not because this camera is not so I I have I just film I just can't find it. But so I go back and then it's kind of more organized. Because here I have Prato videos. Here they are organized on my website. They are organized. So that's a snake video. And now we're gonna go to the video here. Uh, that one. Which is without any Gucci logos exactly. So let's look at that. Or let because it's in color, which was I had to block all the logos and I did it. Why not? I was able to Compromise and, and there's no Gucci appears, but you will see what I did. That's in the subtitle, and there was a lot of fighting for that. It didn't want to happen. So that's the uh, fashion channel. This is my first person, and so my, my actress knows her power. And then I put over fashion channel to Mark Sabra the Gucci So now, slow down, I show the fabrics. And so now my person can come in and do, do the act. And in the back, the fashion goes always through. And because it's about the, the beauty, basically, of these fabrics making, which is so stunning, it's mind blowing. They are Kashmir, this, this, this fantastic stuff, as I said, used by Hermes, used by Gucci. So this person I don't know, but you see for example here, the Orientalism, the Exoticism, also the market of Dubai opened up. So needless to say, it's very interesting. So this is the lady I use now. So here comes, I slow her down, here comes my concept which went to the tailor. The tailors I had worked for Chile Chita. Those are really like costume maker. The entire studio worked like to produce me all these outfits. Or something like that. It's insane that the, the costs are just insane. So while you would see this, uh, my people show their clothes. And that was all a cliche. So there was no problem with that part. And now I'm gonna ahead, so you see the idea. I'm moving now a little bit ahead and go to the part that brings us directly to New York. Oh, by the way, no, sick. So you see, the, the language aspect, to have it like a manual to learn language, like an illustration of language. And I grew up with learning. I learned Italian, I learned French, I learned English, always learning. Because I'm coming from the mountain. So drugs, <laughs> label. Do you see this also? Label. Racism. Now comes my silk snake dress. Yeah. So this is the this and then we have seen the snake dress. It's green and then the other fabric. 
So the production goes in here. But the New York thing is done. And you will see why. Let's go there. In New York, they opened the flagship. And here's New York. So I go through all, I have seven outfits, or eight outfits actually. And now we go to the New York part. And in the, okay, here comes the New York part. Now, Gucci opened what they call a flagship in Prankhauer. And, uh, and, and, and I went to look at it. And I have to say, I never was in a Gucci show, or showroom or so. But I did not even go into the one in New York. I did not go because they're outside was enough for me because they had this like student looking outfits in the window which were real film and then happened something really interesting they just did not hide it they projected in the back against in the back a film from which I happen to recognize nobody recognized that film is because it's from 68 and I once mm -hmm. created something and I knew that film and that film is, a, is, is, is by Arthur Lindsay and was supposed to be like this revolutionary 68, fuck everybody, fuck establishment. And it ends with like this really sexy looking students from the roof shooting down all the people. Like, and, and this is very known in the US. It's not an if, it's, it's, a, it's a in fact. It's a in fact. It's a happens every week in the United States, where a student basically goes on the roof and goes crazy and shoots all the people. Ciao. So, uh, for this segment, for this segment, I added, I added New York City, uh, Louis Yeshi. So, I, I added just the parts they took out. Because they understood you cannot necessarily show guns, and they also didn't have any. Do you have to go already? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so here, so they took all the labels out there. Obviously, here is always Gucci. Shopping at Gucci, even in May, to see the Trump Tower. Okay, so here you see the boutique, that's real. And I don't know whether Milano was the same thing, but uh, here they could check the film if You see uh, leaflets coming down. So already I did uh, get rid of Gucci label. And then uh, I put in what they did, put, what they put out, I put in the sound from the film, the actual film, and I put in, this was by the way of a China, from the film, as big as the entire window, but very short, and I put in really the, the gun stuff, the machine gun stuff. You see, now they're throwing Molotov cocktail, but they don't, you don't see them, but you see already, this is Trump Tower, you see the, the tower, machine. And you see the explosions. If don't watch. So, so this was actually a news at the time. But uh, I, I stop and I go back to what we did in Vienna because in Vienna you see what I, the way I showed it. And it's about like that. So you will see when that part comes. Okay, here. So I'm going about to the same part, except here you see everything, okay? And.
but you get the point. That was already the first problem, you know, they didn't want that. And then I stopped, basically I continue and I stopped with this. Uh, but now I'm going to go to the YouTube version and it continues and, uh, and then it continues like here. Okay, here I can, uh, we go out. And then here, it goes towards the market. This is not Arlo, the fashion show in Arlo by using the fires. And these are the instructions, use my fabrics here. So you see the fires are probably... So this is actually, the thing is, um, now I'm going to go again uh, into these videos and hope I find the one with the people acting and that's kind of, uh, where is it, you know, um, I, I can't, I can't, I can't find it, but it's okay. So they freaked out, they freaked out and I said, uh, they freaked out and I said, okay, too much violence, you cannot show this. And then I made a new one. By the way, this is how I did at the end, I was saying to people. Okay, it goes like this. And uh, so I said, yeah, I, I showed that, yeah. Okay, so they said, no, you can't have this. You can't have this. And then I said, okay, I bring another one, Harmony. And so I made another video because I said, you can't show this video. And I needed a video in order to, uh, in order to organize the, the defile, in order to organize the Rampage show, so people know what to do and to go. And, and this one, you see the, you will see, and I used a, an advertisement from 72, which is called yes, Harmony and Love.
So, uh, as I said, the, um, you can find the person here, how they love, and um, what's obviously the first time is fantastic, the second time, but when you hear it five times, it becomes like something very uh, depressive <laughs> and terrorizing. And um, uh, just to show you just for a second how this thing looks, uh, the, the part itself, because here too, in terms of like how advertisement works, uh, I wanted to just find you the part. So here you can see a bit better. Because See how they use race, how they use uh, uh, people to get that point over. And that was already by an international company who needed to do that. And they also happened to do this in Italy. Here, on the hilltop, exactly, you see this? On the hilltop of, of Italy, you know, we assembled. And, oh god, mm. I just lost it. But, uh, it, but I saw this so... Okay, so I think that... Okay, but I think I kind of... To bring Coca-Cola bottlers, you know, it's all the real thing, you know? I, I really, that I took away, Gucci, I took away, like, uh, Prato, Marks, I'm not allowed to have them. So I put Harun in love in place. <laughs> see the Chinese restaurant and their, their things and um, I made the Chinese this Gucci bag what, <laughs> see that Gucci bag here uh, you see the Gucci bag as a kind of a, you know accessory and, and here you see in the background of Chinatown and that's the snake dress so that's kind of how it went and uh, now what we did here, by the way, that part, that part, so just so you see, that part, we did this, we basically mimicked this, this aspect. And then I did, as I told me, I put everything away. But now I show you, we go directly to the worker's part. And the worker's part uh, is really interesting because I wanted to have Chinese voices. And, uh, and the worker part, they also perform in the workers' dresses, you see? So the workers' dresses, and they were fake, so we made the workers' dresses, and because they're all fake, because they were bought from the supermarket, I made also this additional aspect, and it's called fake chiate, and, 
And then here's this logo, as I said, for those who didn't count, the logo are just screenshots when you put the Prato and Dexter work. Prato and Dexter gives you a lot of information about all these conflicts in Prato. In Italian, they said to me, cose brutte. And now let's listen a little bit at this, um, at this video, which they hated so much. They hated it so much that they interrupted the show. They interrupted the show and it came to this eclat. <coughs> and then I show you also the eclat itself a little bit. Uh, in Prato video. And I think the Prato video is very roughly edited. Okay, here it is. Video. Prato video work video. Here. That one. So, uh, as I said, my computer was broken down. It is the end of the, the video. Okay. My land must not become a second Shanghai, says the deputy mayor. Since the beginning of the year, controls have been tightened and penalties have imposed. Loading and unloading times had to be strictly adhered to. The use of handcarts wasn't permitted. The Chinese felt they were being harassed. Over the last three months, they've tried, dare I say, to drive us out. They cannot do that. When we bought the shops, we did everything perfectly legally, all of our board. We would hardly credit it. Many more sorts 
again, uh, you know, here you see, for example, the labels, and you can see they didn't make me the labels. I had to just do it on paper. I mean, they didn't do it. They just they, they refused to do these things. And um, uh, so, you see, here you see uh, they just couldn't handle these things. But when you see the actual video, which I stopped because people started to leave and didn't want to, it is not so bad. Like, why do I need, why does an artist have to be beaten up? and to be stolen of his work and to be uh, treated so badly just because he shows stuff he finds on Google. And uh, let's see a little bit more from the video they hated so much that led to the, to the eclat. And then we go and go to the discussion. So they took everything away, but interesting enough, there was suddenly an RT, there was suddenly a talk, suddenly, um, a video appeared on the internet about the discussions and then you get the idea what happened and there already you see the director uh, and you see already the, the discussion so let me uh, go ahead that part is here that part is here otherwise we're sitting too long the video by Open and Naomi okay, yeah, subtitle, okay. So this is a woman Naomi Neri, she barely has anything. And this was after the discussion, you know, yeah. So what I did is I, for an international audience, Sorry, you see now, like it's a bit so <laughs> late. <laughs> no, 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 so yeah, late, no, no, uh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 Uh, so here I subtitled. Mm -hmm. What I did is I just subtitled it and I made like this Freudian thing. But you will see how it works. That's the only video we have from the, that it even happened. That's the only video I could, I could even prove that <coughs> something happened apart of the photos. The photos they couldn't take away and I go where it starts. And because you can speak Italian, I don't need to really. <laughs> but all the videos shown are the result of when I put Prato and Textile Bordering. Those were the videos that came out. Allora, quando anche io non, non potevo vedere la video, perché aspetta, aspetta, la sua no, 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 aspetta. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, she knows it a little bit because her father owns a, a, a couple of factories. But, um, but still, it is, uh, the, the, the old person had, didn't want to be associated with this world. And she was really uh, incredible. And then she accused me of not having told her when I have all these photos where we were testing. Everybody always knew I could check it. And I can show you afterwards some photos where, where there are actually those wild pictures in the back and she smiles in there. So, so we have it. Now, here the director, Pirella, comes here and ridiculizes me for being basically, uh, we, we expect something else that somebody projects, just YouTube video. And, and the next thing is what she's going to say a bit later is that, that I basically have no idea. And she says, I'm here for three months, I don't see this reality. I don't see this reality. So basically, this idea of the Puccia, this misrepresentation of facts, you know, uh, she accuses. But the, 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 what's also important to understand, I myself do not make a statement about Prado. I only show what I find on Google, what I find in relationship uh, to Prado told, spoken by Chinese. All I wanted to have is to create a platform so Chinese workers and Chinese whatever small business owner can talk about their own situation. That's the only thing I wanted to do. So I am not saying anything. I make no statement about good or bad, uh, this or that, uh, Chinese to this, uh, Italian to that. No, I just show what I find. And that's very important. Uh, and and when then they say, hey, no, this is all a lie, I, I basically freaked out. I do apologize I, that, that I called the lady a brat, but they get at me. I was so under stress. I mean, imagine the performance was interrupted. I was chased away. You heard the board member calling the Waffa cruel and so on. This part, after this, this video, that board member came running after me. I had to run across the scene. He had to be hauled back. He was like really trying to, 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 to kick me. And, and he's a board member of a museum, which is just incredible. And here the question is not so much about me. This is it's not supposed to be about me at all. It's about an artist. Can you invite, can an institution invite an artist and then basically beat the shit out of him? when he does actually just show what everybody already knows. Now, the, the other actress who also interrupted, she came running in and she says, we did this already 10 years ago. She doesn't even say it. She doesn't go as far and say, no, what you show is wrong. She, her entire message is, we did exactly show these things 10 years ago. So in fact, she confirms that the things exist, but 10 years ago. But sorry, I didn't know it. But do you see what I mean? Uh, that's just so incredible. And you see also how aggressive the situation is. Thank you. 
table, like a, like a Michelin rated restaurant, do not talk about the, you know, do not include my videos, do not include those, those Google logos. They, and I said, no. Then they brought me to a lawyer. Uh, and the lawyer who was supposed to work for them said he has a right as an artist to show it. Then I was at the city, the Ascensore, Simone something. He said, yes, he can use the name Marx. Yes, he can subtitle Marx Soprato, Gucci Soprato. Uh, when he said yes to all these things, yes, he has to only hide the violent scene and the Gucci logo during that film, which you have seen I did. I did. And uh, they did not tell me not to have the sound, so I have the sound, you know. But I did, I complied fully. And after this discussion, the board member came running after me and I had to run away. They held him back and he was like inside him, inside him. And suddenly, the main PR person who did all these things, you know, left from the discussion table when the ascensor, a political person who was very, who understood it, who said, uh, yes, he can use it. Then the PR person left and I didn't see the PR person. But at that moment, uh, the PR person reappears. And she was a silent death, the cuts are rotto tutto. And the best thing is she had the she had the t-shirt by the other artist who was invited. They invited two artists, one was Yoko Ono and one was me. And Yoko Ono said them just the word dream. No, in my case it turned into an incubo, like into a nightmare. But the thing is, she had this word dream, I remember her this jacket, and then she was not only like yelling at me, I wrote a tutto, this would be cut, but I really traumatized me. But then she was, she's taller than I am, and she hit with the elbows in my, in my stomach. Meanwhile, uh, the camera did, it was all filmed. Meanwhile, the next thing, it, it, it runs over the camera and tells them he has to stop filming. And, and obviously, after the, right after the show, you know, they took, at that moment, they took away my camera. They took away my camera, which I also filmed, and took out the things. And then nothing. There was a little bit of discussion, but then, which was actually <laughs> where she herself says, I'm sorry, I did like violence, you know, so she in a way, even in her email says it's violence. But. So, let's look briefly uh, at the lawyer's letter, which, uh, the lawyer's letter, which I got which is actually kind of interesting, because that in itself is so, so also so stunning. Uh, index, and I have it here. So in Vienna, uh, by the way, we have to pay for the shipment ourselves. They refuse to ship it. So I have to also pay somebody to go there, to, to pick it up, so physically, to pick it up. They didn't do anything. Uh, then they did not send everything back. Uh, staff was missing. But let's now look at the lawyer's letter here, uh, which is here. And, and that's actually all for real. I mean, it's not even. Uh, and because I, I myself and my teacher, because of my teacher, you see, so I projected the lawyer's letter. Because of my teacher, I was able to, to basically let everything go. But they clearly told me what they're going to do, and they all did this, you see? Clearly they told me what I'm going to do, and they did it. So this is what I got, okay? This is the, the English thing they sent me. Dear Mr. Ganard, please find a path to draft of the settlement. If somebody wants a settlement, I have it. Now, uh, they entered into the museum page pin and community park. This pin was explained to me is behind the Phoenix University. I never saw a pin person. But I was told this is a kind of an entity that allows them to move funds between the different, you know, the different departments. Then, 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 so basically, they sh so that right now at this point, the patching controlled everything. Uh, so I said they never had anything to do with it. It was all a city set. And the city says, no, no, it's the pin, the university. And, and the university kind of doesn't, I mean, it was never really involved. But it, doesn't matter. So, okay, in this court version of the arrangement, uh, you renounce, you have to renounce 2,500 from the, the thing. 2000, I mean, remember, I worked a year, I traveled there several times, and not only this, and this is not even reflected, I had about nearly 2,000 dollars in extra cost, which they promised me they would pay me 
for the video editing assistance, because those videos are made are quite complex, like the first one, the slowing down, the movement, it's quite complex, I have to have a video editor, which I have to pay in New York, which costs me quite some money. Um, then I had to, I had these other things made, I had special accessories done, and I had certain t-shirts made, uh, and, and so that was basically nearly 2,000, which I also don't get paid now, and then I had to renounce or 6,500. So, so here I had to basically, in order to get my staff back, to give up legally. And the next thing is you undertake and remove any video, any image related to the artwork. I mean, imagine that. They commission this artwork. So, this is a non disclosure agreement, not only in the sense that they cannot talk what happened to me, but they say I have to take everything down. I mean, it is insane. But they say to me, I have to remove. Please teach me Chinese, this much as well. Any video connected to the performance made, I have to take everything down. And, and you see what I mean? It's, it's incredible. And then also the, the video and, and, and all this stuff was commissioned. I mean, I have, I have this argument, I have emails where I said I want this and that, and I need to have that for the production that they also agreed. And within the discussion, the, the situation changed every minute. So one day I got it, I got an entire day of videos we filmed because it was all filmed for a film afterwards. And um, the next day they took, they, they didn't give it to me again. And then they gave it to me again. So and, and now here's the thing, I should I should all the stuff has to be taken away. And I mean it's so insane. And that in itself is so hard to believe. The treatment of an artist, so this is not supposed to about me. It is really supposed about somebody, how a museum uh, treats somebody, and, and what's the very best. The people involved here are actually people who make a lot of sense otherwise. I work with them together. And they said, because we have the five star movement coming, we cannot have this. You know, if you have marks, it might help the five star movement. And then, boom, they, be, they, they, they treat me worse than. Than the fascists. Do you see what I mean? I would say this is. And I was traumatized. You can basically stop also and go eat now. No, 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 no. Does, does anybody have a question? Me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We, so we all have lots of questions. No, no, no. So, so, okay, so that's why I was ready. Please, for, please for, that's a question because. Yeah. No, so at, at, at which point did they know what you were supposed to do? From the very beginning, from February. Because I think that's, that, that's one of the, the biggest yeah. mistakes. So, I mean, since they knew this, because I yeah. feel, okay, so both of us, we're from Tuscany, so we know that maybe the situation is kind of, well, I don't think it's complicated. The thing is, what, how you want to relate to this, meaning they, they have a museum there, and there's all these, these Chinese people living there, because it's just printed out, no? All these things. So, I don't know whether I think, probably some people know, I think all, many people know about all this, but how, so how they want you to relate to this, meaning, do they want to, to put out a problem, because there is a problem, of course, the one you showed up, or they want to try to somehow involve the population, because I feel that the choice of showing all this could have been relevant if they wanted to accept that. I mean, so they invited you, so this thing is gonna happen. And I think it's also good to, to take out this, I mean, to put out this, because this is an issue and I, a museum also have to deal with this, I think, in a sense. Mm -hmm. So the, the only thing is, I mean, the only thing I didn't really like, I mean, I think Christian likes also, she's also good. She managed it quite well, the director. The other ones, they, they did not, I guess. The ones who yell at you and the other ones. Yeah. I mean, okay, you're still a, a board member, so you should keep, keep yourself together, no? Even and Perela, the Perela scene was in as far really tragic because I worked with her so well before. And mm -hmm. on Saturday I spoke to her. And on Saturday, uh, she was even agreed with me and said they have no right to tell you you cannot show these videos. Yeah, that's, but that's the point. Exactly. I, I agree with you. Then, then I cleared, she, the first thing was she was in Rome, she was not present, she was never mm -hmm. involved. She was in New York, I said come here and explain the project, she didn't come. And, uh, and, and then whatever happened, 
uh, when everything was cleared from the ascensori, and the woman who was like crazy uh, Toko uh, was basically gone, and I could do what I wanted. That woman suddenly, from afar, she started to tell, I cannot do this, I cannot do this. So what, what, what I assume might have happened is that uh, Toko told the new just appointed director, you have to intervene. And then, you know, and that's why Pereira put on this really horrible show because it is, you know, she cannot ridiculize me as, as an artist that I use Google and she cannot say, look, I'm here for three months and this is not what I, what I see here. It's, I have this fantastic relationship with Prato that obviously she never has, she never went into a, a Chinese factory and she, and I'm not even saying that this is uh, all abuse. I'm just saying, uh, she cannot say that what I showed here, which I found from BBC, is a fake, is not existing. And all I tried to do so hard is to ask somebody who is there, who really works, and those people were there to accept it, to say something. They didn't say something. They were just like staring at me, they couldn't believe what happened. Uh, that, that they say something. What is their experience? And I wasn't, um, and that, that didn't happen. They didn't let this happen. And the Chinese uh, actress and the owner of the Chinese factory, uh, I mean, the, the door of the Chinese factory, is very, very interesting, uh, her reaction. And because on one hand, she told me, cause brutal is all successful, but because her, at home, she knows what's going on, you know. On the other hand, she did not. She was in between and she couldn't really understand the situation. And, but just simply the fact that, you know, by the way, Benzo is where most of the Chinese come from. Benzo, I don't know, yeah. Why do you think they, they didn't defend you? Why they didn't say anything to defend Who? you in that position? Who? The Chinese guy who was actually, you said before that there were Chinese people working in the factory yes. uh, in, inside the public, but it didn't say a word, not even when you keep asking. Yes, yeah. because be, that, that's what I was saying. Again, I cannot, I cannot speak for them. You would have to ask, I cannot speak for them, but I, I believe what happened, I can only see what I saw after that, and we're talking about 20 or 30 people, no? They came all together and put their heads together like a little trove, a little uh, group of people and looked at me. And they looked at me. And they were really baffled. Like they didn't say anything, but they were really scared. Do you really think they stunned. were scared? Because, I mean, Carrella, I mean, she was, um, she was trying to defend her position, the fact that she didn't know a lot about this video. So at the beginning, she was trying to be like new, uh, on a neutral yeah. side. And then she closed saying that nobody was defending you. Nobody was saying, yes, I'm working at the factory and I was in the video, blah, blah, blah. So she told you this offensive thing that your work was not useful because you didn't uh, build a relationship with the Prato's people. Why do you think they were scared? They were no, I mean, she said, she said, I don't understand the complexity. The point is this, when you see, as I said, for example, in a Chinese factory, when the owner just says, without asking, I ask, can you ask, um, can I ask, can we talk to your workers? The owner did not say you can talk to workers. He said, you can have, commander style, you can have the clothes of my workers for 20 euros, commander style. The, 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 it's very authoritarian. So that's you know? why they were yes, scared. Yes, that's why that they were scared. They were so, scared so within Chinese factories, it's terrible. I mean, I perceive this as terrible. The fear, the, the way, the relationship they have. And also, as you know, the partially uh, Camilla's tourists, they're locked in and, and they live in there. It's a very complicated relationship. But all they have learned in their, I mean, that's what I assume, you know, to succeed in this world, you cannot speak up. And it was in English, it was fast, it was Italian, which is also not uh, a lot of these workers when they are there, they're not necessarily speaking in Italian right now. And they would never want to go in between. You know, so 
in a in a con in a situation where everybody else around you, you do not want to go out and say a word. Sure, yeah. I mean they the intellectuals. Maybe because that, for but, the first time you were yes. realizing what they did yes. uh, before to But again I will be very careful to speak for for but that's how I made you. When you're in a situation where you where you are harassed from all sides, you know, you have stress from the Chinese uh, owners of the factory within the factory. Then they have stress um, from the, uh, you know, the legality, the Italian authorities. Then they have, uh, they see already how they jump over me, they see already how they take me apart, how everybody else around me. This was not necessarily a, a quiet thing because obviously there was only one microphone, but it was loud, 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 loud. And you could see, for example, the moment somebody else had the microphone, I would say so you couldn't hear anymore. So it is only the person who has the microphone who could be heard. But, but you, even if you have the microphone, these people are yelling so much, and, and I was so nervous. They, they were Chinese, they were Italian, they were both? Yeah, but the Chinese never said anything. The Chinese workers were there, they just looked at it. They didn't know what to do. You know, they didn't know what to do. And um, that's, you know, it was very difficult to understand what was going on. In fact, my American friends who saw that this video, you know what they saw? I, I made it up. Oh, they so saw, this is all made. This, this is, yeah, I created this conflict as, a, as an act. <laughs> they, they created this as, as an act. So only now, by the way, by the way also, I cannot, because they took the videos away where, where, where the actual physical assault happens, I cannot even do anything. Even Art News who wrote about it said we can't do anything because she denies it. So then they cannot do it. But in my case, I have a right to at least say this is what happened to me, I can speak for myself. Now, that's what I'm trying to do to, um, to work on this and I hope but for example, a big support is a woman here, an Italian woman, a journalist. Her name is Alessandra Galas. Uh, Alessandra uh, Gal 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 Galletta. Galletta, who was paid 3000 and she told me 3000 to film for me. And she had all the material. And I asked her, can you please leak me material, give this material? And she did do it. And, and, I, and obviously, everybody is dependent on Prato. There was this journalist, when you look at it, when there was a fantastic journalist uh, who actually was a founder, uh, a board member, a founding board member, and gave a lot of money to the, um, to, uh, the Very, very, very 
happy about the bravery to show this. Because well, next time, I, let's say... I think, well, you know, I get it, but... It, no, I no, I no, I think it's just part of part of a discussion. So that I mean, you can see this, you can have or and, and what you done. Everybody can have their own ideas on this, and this is just part of a discussion. That's what artist does. So that's that. That's one thing. I mean, I'm, I'm not taking point on, on you or on yeah, the others yeah, yeah. or on anybody. It's just something. I mean, you've been invited there. You did this, and so. I mean, it's, I think it's part of a conversation just to have, yes, have, yes, have, yes, have yes. Every, everything in this. I mean, I think everybody who sees this or everybody participating in this can have their own ideas or whatever. Maybe they know better the situation, maybe they know less the situation. That's it. It's just, just part of how sometimes art should do this, so to keep yeah. up a conversation. So that's the only thing. So I, I don't think, I mean, I'm not standing on point. I'm also from Tuscany. So I know a lot of this and a lot of the situation. I don't think I have a, a right idea on this or a point, because I know also some things about Prato, about how people have to deal with this, how, how complicated that, that thing should be. But it's just, yeah, to keep keeping up a conversation. So that's, that's so it. I have the, two that's, the, that, that's the thing, I think, mostly. So I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm not staying in a position or not. I'm just here to see this. So it's just, uh, Widespreading spreading this thing should be. I mean, and now it's not to be like, I don't know, um, scared or uh, pretentious or to be on one side or the other. It's just to have this. So it's just to keeping up a conversation. Why not? I always try to, to, to transfer this to New York because like the city of New York invites an arts to do something, let's say, and then the, the, the museum doesn't like what the artist does. And then a board member is like hitting the artist or insult, alone inside verbally. We saw that. Uh, a board member is doing this. Right. Right. Yeah. No, 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 no. Right. Like, it should be. I'm just no, saying. But I'm saying that they lost control. And Can I shut down this? I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. So, uh -huh. Thank you. For, wow, too oh, yeah. 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 Sorry. It's, I'm still uh, the corner. Let's say it again, that they lost control. They lost control on you and on your work. That's tangible. Of course, the reaction wasn't right, but they probably didn't expect it. Or this is, this is reminding me, did you see the movie The Square? Non mi è piaciuto molto, però. Cioè, this movie, uh, it's like... The cube. The, no, The Square. It's the cube or the quadrato? The quadrato. The Square, quello molto polemizzato, tremendo, è un film nordico che era finito agli Oscar l'anno scorso sul sistema dell'arte. C'è il direttore di un museo che è un po' lo Stedelic Museum e che non guarda un direttore fichissimo, un uomo molto ovviamente aperto, un certo tipo, eccetera, eccetera. Lui non, non guarda uno spot del suo museo perché ha dei problemi familiari e non ha tempo per vedere questo spot che va in onda ed è una cosa violentissima e quindi lo mandano a casa e, e io ho pensato tutti hanno pensato non potrebbe mai succedere a un direttore di museo è come se tu facessi uscire la comunicazione dalla tua galleria senza dare un'occhiata è evidentemente quello che è successo un po' qui they lost control maybe on your work they didn't see the video they didn't know exactly what I didn't what see the video show. at the end neither because ah. they didn't let me and as I said what so I call blind they editing they didn't know how to manage uh -huh. all this uh, but is the video itself so bad when the woman just talks about the rules and the bicycle how they get the fine it's, it's, it's a roughly cut video but it's not uh, you see I would have in the beginning, my idea was to do it with the others, just images. I didn't really want to have the video, but they didn't let me do it otherwise. And then, in the end, when, when I understood, okay, the, the, you, you're not going to get paid, you're not going to get that money, I have nothing more to lose, I just did it. And then I did it in the sense, uh, as I could do it practically. And again, video editing, you have those blocks and you can put them on a timeline. And, and, and it takes a long time to render the images, to calculate it. And, and it takes about an hour 
or so to render the thing into a, into a running movie. So there is no time to look at it. And we had no time to look at it. And the editor who edited with me was there. So I said, look, ask the editor, I didn't see the movie. And, uh, and again, I, I had a, a second person there to edit me. They said, was sent away. And they did everything not to have me edit. Okay. So it's always on a practical level. Now, what I do is to explain the situation as to try to reduce it of a simplistic, uh, like artist, uh, institutional thing, you know, and, and to get rid of myself. I don't want it to be about me. But I was only in a such uh, interesting because I did not give in. If I could have, you know, like if, I mean, they clearly told me, you're not going to get that money. You're not going to get that money. And I said, okay, then fuck the money. Yeah, but, but you well, have, it's a lot of money for me. Yeah, yeah, okay, so I, I don't know any about these things. I mean, not, not because I just, yeah. I, it's just something I don't know. The thing about Rato and that yeah. thing, it's the complicated side, I think. It's the fact of having a museum there and Rato's being widespread of Chinese people because it just happened. I mean, as you yeah, yeah. told us. So to keep this thing working, I mean, you, I think you can have a museum or somehow just there, so it's there. And no matter the city, no matter everything else, or you can have a museum and try to cooperate somehow to deal with Si può mangiare perché possiamo anche camminare per mangiare, non che non ci perché tutta la giornata non l'ho mangiato ieri. Perciò io sono venuto tutta la notte e perciò è un po' un po' un bagno c'è? Sì. Allora io stop this here now.